This is reading from the notebooks by Maria Valtorta, 1944, May 29th. Jesus says, Come, little John, I have so many things to tell you to calm your suffering. First of all, come and drink. You are more fortunate than John. He rested his head on my chest when not yet wounded. John chapter 13, verses 23 to 25. As for you, come, clinging to my lacerated chest, and you can drink the love flowing from my wounded heart. Be good, be still. As a mother holds a sick child in her arms to console him in his sufferings, so I am holding you. Oh, you don't know how much you have done, how much you are doing with this affliction of yours. You think you are doing nothing because you are no longer able to do anything but suffer. You are doing much, much more than when you taught, prayed, and worked for, worked for me. Then it was you that acted and gave me what you did, what you wanted to do. I accepted it, for I am good. I accepted it because I do not disdain anything. I accepted it because I made your poor deeds rich with my merits. Now it is I who act, and I am doing everything. I am taking everything. I want everything. I don't leave you a blade of your wealth in life, health, strength, repose, and freedom. I mean human life, health, strength, repose, and freedom. I cancel out everything. I suppress everything. To you as a woman, nothing. To you as a soul, I give myself everything. Listen to your master. Before telling you a couple of things you wish to know, I want to give you the program of suffering for the days of your week. And let us look at the major groups for which suffering is needed, the ones for which I too suffered in the Passion, the priesthood, the despairing, sinners, idolaters, and the souls waiting to return to God, that is for you, the souls being purged, for me at that time, the just in limbo. There are seven days in the week. For, for the need of three groups, there should have been seven times seven, but there are seven, and you will thus suffer in this way, on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, for the priesthood. In the priesthood, I include all the consecrated of every kind and category. Why three days for them alone? Because on account of their needs, all seven would not suffice. What is the priesthood for the mass of the faithful? What shall we compare it to? To the vital elements. Could the earth have received and conserved life without light, heat, water, and air? No, it could not have. Well then, take the Bible and read its first chapter. Genesis chapter 1. What does it say? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. On the first day he made the light, for the earth was covered with darkness, and life cannot exist where there is perpetual darkness. On the second day he said, Let the firmament exist, and separate the water, waters from the waters, for water was needed for earthly life. Yet not all of it was to be on the globe or in heaven, but rather it was to descend when fitting, remaining gathered together when fitting, and go back up as appropriate. The earth would otherwise have become a dust or a swamp. On the third day he created the sea by gathering together the waters, the sea, the enormous basin for the discharging of all the terrestrial waters and for the nourishment of all the heavenly waters, which the clouds, when they, when they scatter over again, again over the earth. Three days to prepare the earth to be inhabited, and on the third day he robed it in grass and plants, because it could now receive seed and turn it into useful flora. Then upon the earth, where there was already light, water, and air, he now ignited the source of heat, and with the sun perfected the light, and with the stars and moon regulated the tides and the waves of the winds and the heavenly waters. The earth was thus ready to receive the animals, and finally, on the earth completed with every good man, the king. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. If the week had more days, I would have imposed on you four devoted to penance for the free priesthood, for it is necessary for the life of the spirit, like the four vital elements for the earth, light, water, air, and fire. But how can it be light if it, extingu it is extinguished or darkened? But how can it be water if it is arid? But how can it be breath if it itself is asphyxiated? But how can it be fire if it is ice? O poor souls of mine, mine because I conquered you with my death, poor, poor souls of mine who are becoming weaker and weaker, like stems that come to lack light, air, heat, and water, how sorry I am for you, and how much 
How very much disdain and repugnance I feel over those who are unable and unwilling, always unwilling, to absorb the four vital elements to give them to you. What are they for, then? What missions do they perform? The one I entrusted to the priesthood. Matthew chapter 10, chapter 16, verses 17 to 19, chapter 18, verse 18, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Mark chapter 3, verses 15 to 19. Chapter 6, 7 to 8, 13. Chapter 16, verses 14 to 18. Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 to 16. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. Chapter 10, one, uh, verses 1 through 20. Chapter 24, verses 45 to 40, uh, 49. And John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. Chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. And chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. What are they for, then? What mission do they perform? The one I entrusted to the priesthood? No. The mission of their gain, and of dispersing what I have gathered together. Oh, just a wisp keeps, them from strike, keeps me from striking them. Maria, look and tremble on seeing my face. With this face I will ask them, What have you done to my children, my lambs? Where are these flocks of mine? Why have they turned into wild billy goats? Why did they lie, torn to pieces by the four enemies of man, the flesh, knowledge, power, and the devil? Why, blinded, wounded, dispersed, hungry, thirsty, naked, spiritually illiterate, persecuted, and abandoned, were they forced to cry out, God does not exist, for we do not see him, do not hear him, and do not know him through the work and the word of those who call themselves the priests of God? Because the best ones, the ones who were wrong in your eyes, unforgivably wrong in being better than you in faith, hope, and charity, sacrifice, chastity, and detachment from all that was not me, and me crucified, the ones I filled with pure waters and select wheat for the hungry, and those dying of spiritual thirst to replace the cisterns which had dried up, and the granaries in which too many moths had made their dwellings, the ones I made light and heat for those seeking to be guided to God in the darkness and the fire in the cold so as not to die. Why have you struck and crucified these on one of your crosses? They were already on mine and remained there willingly for your sake as well. And that sufficed for their suffering, O presumptuous and slothful servants who have never wanted to suffer anything, not even physical weariness, not even the salutary humiliation of seeing yourselves surpassed in heroism, by these faithful servants of mine, whom I clasp to my heart, because through them the light and the word have been conserved on earth, stars shining over the centuries during their parabola, so that heaven will always shine on men, and they can find it and say, God is there. The word of God is really pulsating in that ray, and I can still hear it, just enough for me to believe, hope, and love to be saved. That was enough for their suffering, and you have become sons of Satan to torture them, but, do you see, they have been healed of your tortures with the balm emerging from my heart. They have drunk the comfort, holy elation, peace, and love of a God remaining that way as I hold them clasped against my heart. This is what I shall say to them. But you, give me three days of pain for them. It is painful for me, the eternal pontiff, to see that my priestly army is full of sluggards and deserters. You shall give Wednesday to your Lord for your poor brothers and sisters in despair, as you call them, on May 15th. They are brothers and sisters. No one should be so much of a brother or sister for you as someone who is poor, alone, and sick. And those despairing are poor with the greatest poverty. They have lost everything in losing hope in God. They are alone. There is no solitude more real than this. It is the only real solitude. They are without God. They are sick, an illness which produces death, real death. It is necessary to heal them, restore them to God, and make them rich with God. But your fraternity involves love, not nature. You are not despairing. You think you thought you were in hell, beginning on April 9th, and you were. You were in paradise because you were serving me. You serve me. You are there. You are in Gethsemane, and move from it to the cross, and the, from the cross to it. But with each elevation you rest on my heart. It is I who elevate you. With every deposition you rest on Mary's heart. 
you then go back to your Gethsemane and your cross, but you go there with the savor of my love and the fragrance of the immaculate heart of a mother. On Thursday you shall suffer for the large group of the idolaters. Idolatry is not just to worship an idol. For me, idolatry is the worship of anything which is not the true God. Idolaters include savages, indeed. They are such less than many of the civilized who, while knowing, knowing that there is one triune God, worship a thousand idols, ranging from their self to the self of one of their peers, and along this way have many altars and false gods named money, power, sensuality, ras the rationalistic knowledge, and so on. For me, then, both the savage and the civilized are idolaters when they have national or individual forms of worship which are not true. I thus include in the intentions for Thursday all those who must know the most holy name of God and my own, those to whom the cross as an arrow pointing to heaven is not yet known, those who follow a revealed religion which is not, however, religion, and those who are Christians but not Catholics. The Church is one, the Church of Rome. Offer and suffer for those whom an erroneous science turns into idolaters of the mind, and those whom a passion turns into idolaters of the heart. Have them return to me. I am the true God, and there is no other above or apart from me. To me there must be given the love and worship of the creatures created by the Father, redeemed by the Son, and loved by the Spirit. Thursday will be the day of pain for all of them. On a distant Thursday evening, the wound of betrayal in my heart, with the echo of my mother's goodbye in my heart, with foreknowledge of the approaching complex martyrdom in my heart, the Son of Man, the Son of God, I prayed for all, for those who were mine, or who would become mine through the word I had spoken and entrusted to my friends and disciples. I prayed for those who, through the heresy of a wretch, would separate from the living trunk of the Roman Church, that they might once again be one with it, and thus with me, and with the Father. Finally, I prayed for all men, because I was dying for them all. John chapter 17 God my Father had entrusted to me the whole human race. I became man to redeem and save the children of Adam, and Adam was one. There was not as many Adams as the races of the earth, but one single Adam, and I came to save his descendants of whatever color, point of latitude or longitude, or degree of civilization. And I want all men to be where I am, that is, in the Father's breast. This would be my joy, as it is my aspiration. Pray then for these who are not in me, or who have gone out through the error of their forebears, or through the error of their minds, made proud by the semblance of knowledge they possess. Let Friday be for those undergoing their spiritual crucifixion in purgatory, seeking God and still unable to have Him. You know as I do what it means to feel separated from God. Jesus descended into, into the netherworld after His death. Sorry, from Maria, as in note 3 to 6, for Jesus, see Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, and Mark chapter 15, verse 34. I know you do not the rejoicing, the rejoicing which carried off the just in a whirlwind of love when I appeared on a far-off Friday, Jesus' descent into the netherworld after his death, and said, The wait is over. Come and possess God. So that every Friday my angels can say these words to many spirits in purgation, Suffer and offer every Friday. The blessed are the gems born of the blood which I shed to the last drop on Good Friday. To open the kingdom for a soul and introduce it into blessedness. Blessedness is to give me back what is mine. Justice then and love for me. Saturday is the day of the mother and she has already asked you to suffer for sinners. For example, at the end of the dictation on May 20th. Let, your, let every Saturday of yours be, then be a band of thorns surrounding your heart so that it will be covered with roses to offer Mary. Every sinner who returns to God is a rose you place at the mother's feet, a rose with which she wipes away the tears flowing from her eyes, since I made her the mother of the human race, so hostile to me. And for you, the week is over, and little John has not had an hour of freedom to think of himself. I'll take care of you, the mother and I, and will do you, will, and while you do what you can as you can, with difficulty in spite of your good will, the mother and I act for your sake, as we are able to. If you ruined your sight, lips, knees, and heart and praying, and working for yourself, you would make yourself only a rag as a robe, compared to the regal one. Mary is weaving for you, and your Jesus reddens in his blood, for we love you, and see that you love us. You are now tired. Rest before the Pentecostal period is over. I shall tell you what you wish to know. My peace be with you.